Welcome to a new vlog. You might have seen episode 284, which was a two part video dedicated to the RD6006 power supply. I did a full review, and it turned out this power supply brings a bunch of features which were not previously available in this price range. But at that time, I did not have the full kit with enclosure and uh, switch mode power supply. I strongly advise you to watch those videos first if you want to learn more about how this is built and what kind of performance to expect from this unit. This video will be focused on building the power supply into the full dedicated enclosure using the uh, manufacturer recommended 60 volt switch mode power supply. So these are the accessories I'm talking about and they were provided by banggood.com for free for the purpose of this review. So check out the links in the description below if you'd like to order this or maybe just check out the price. What's nice about Banggood is that they had these in stock in the EU warehouse so it took about one week to receive them. As we can see the uh, power supply does not have a known manufacturer brand but that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be bad. We'll take a look inside in a moment and uh, in this bag we have the rest of the accessories they are nicely packed individually these look like the mains wiring this looks like the um, fan controller with a thermistor so it must have a temperature control fan on the enclosure this is the fan it looks like a uh, 50 millimeters wide fan so this should be upgradable if um, uh, you'd like to get one that makes less noise this is the IEC mains input socket with fuse main switch and we have some mounting hardware with some rubber feet for the underside the manufacturer of this uh, power supply is uh, obviously a Chinese manufacturer and this uh, branding N triple V clearly tries to mimic the Minwell logo which is about the uh, same color and size and it's an MW so looking at this from a distance you might think hey it's a Minwell power supply but it's not and um, this is a 400 watt rated power supply uh, it feels to have decent weight but not as heavy as a 400 watt Minwell power supply which will probably cost I don't know at least five times as much as this one correction this is not a 400 watts power supply but a 300 watts version and uh, let's start from the input section we can see we have a small soldered in fuse well uh, a good brand name power supply will have a socket for a fuse in here and there is a footprint to install a socket uh, the fuse should be user serviceable on the field which is what you'll find on a good uh, brand name power supply we have a couple of x-class capacitors um, a common mode choke on the input which has a bit of a strange construction like there's appears to be something missing from this side of the choke uh, we then go through a, a bridge rectifier the uh, voltage selection this doesn't appear to have any power factor correction going on in here it is using the uh, TL494 which is a well-known controller for uh, switch mode uh, power supplies uh, this is the transformer uh, there is a smell coming from uh, this power supply I'm not sure if it's the transformer uh, but it's that uh, smell of uh, crusty electronics and uh, when comparing this to for example a meanwhile power supply at least the ones that I was working with five or six years ago they did not have FR4 PCBs in them so this is superior in uh, in that regard and uh, same as a meanwhile power supply it is using some kind of uh, insulation on the bottom in this case is a uh, thin transparent sheet so that is probably to achieve the safety regulations on the output uh, filtering we have um, 105 degrees rated capacitors but all of the capacitors used on this uh, power supply are Chong brand which is of course uh, a low quality Asian brand of capacitors. If something is going to fail in this power supply uh, it is likely those are going to be the uh, output capacitors. 
Now that we know what we are working with, I'm going to continue the assembly. I'm going to start at the back panel by inserting the uh, rocker switch with the on position uh, at the top side of the back panel. This is just a uh, push fit. For the mains IC input, I'm going to be replacing the uh, fuse that shipped with the unit. They included a, a 10 amp glass fuse in here, but I feel like 10 amps is uh, too much for this uh, power supply. So I'm going to be replacing these with some 6 amps uh, ceramic fuses. I feel like 6 amps is uh, still too much but uh, I don't have any uh, smaller ceramic fuses in my inventory right now so these uh, should be fine. The mains input socket will get attached with uh, these small screws and the nut. Next up I'll install the cooling fan on the back with these long screws uh, and the nut. Once again there are no washers provided for this install. The bad part about the way this fan mounts is that the nuts should be captive but they turn with the screw inside that channel instead of being uh, fixed so it's really hard to screw these down. I'll probably have to uh, use a screwdriver to lock the nut to allow me to apply enough pressure. This is your earth pin, this is your neutral and this is the live wire going through the switch and this is the live wire out of the switch going to the power supply. Next up we're going to be installing the uh, power supply using these uh, big screws that were in the pack with these uh, mounting holes. It should go something like this. Next it's time to connect these uh, spade connectors to the power supply. Watch the markings on the input of the power supply and make sure you connect these to the right pins. Brown will go to the line input, blue will go to the neutral and this uh, yellow with a green stripe will go to the earth pin. I have checked these uh, wires and they are correctly crimped. Uh, I pulled on them, there is uh, no give in the connection so these should be safe to use. Now before continuing with the assembly we should check that our power supply outputs the uh, desired voltage and if not uh, we should adjust or correct for any wiring problems. Once again check that the line neutral and earth are connected to the correct pins of the power supply. Next we can power this up. The green LED turned on which means our power supply is working but let's check the uh, voltage. Looks like our power supply is outputting 60 volts. This is the default setup from the factory but we can adjust this. There is a small white potentiometer right next to the green LED and we should adjust this to 65 volts output because that's what our uh, RD6006 front panel power supply needs to be able to output 60 volts. So I'm going to adjust from this potentiometer. So this is what we want, 65 volts. Next I'm going to turn the power supply off and continue with the assembly. This is the connector to the input of the front panel. So I'm going to be connecting these uh, long wires. Make sure you check the polarity. I have checked the polarity and marked it on the connector. These connections uh, need to be really tight in order to ensure a uh, good connection and prevent any uh, overheating and melting of the connector. This is the fan controller board and it's actually not as simple as you'd think. They went for a microcontroller, an STM8S microcontroller uh, to temperature control the fan present on the uh, uh, backside of the case. So this uh, will take three of these uh, small screws on these mounting posts.
and after connecting uh, the uh, fan control to the power supply all you have to do is uh, insert the uh, fan connector like that make sure none of these uh, wires interfere with the movement of the fan rotor next step is to insert the front panel which is a uh, press fit due to these uh, clamps but first I'm gonna try to connect the uh, input coming from the power supply it's not really a perfect fit with the case as you can see this is uh, sliding in and out and we might get those movements when we operate the banana jacks this problem can be fixed by inserting something between the front panel and the chassis at this point you can also connect the external thermistor which connects to the front panel and is used for uh, battery charging monitoring this has its own connection on the front panel and the idea is that you can slide this uh, through one of the holes available in the enclosure and run the wire outside but I don't think I'm going to use that uh, function so I'm just going to tie this down uh, safely inside the enclosure next it's time to reassemble the enclosure make sure the ventilation slots go towards the front panel because uh, the exhaust because the fan on the back is uh, pushing air out so it needs to be pulling air in through the front of the enclosure so the air circulates all of the enclosure until it is exhausted the last step would be to install these uh, rubber feet using the black screws provided after you're finished with the assembly you will be left with some screws but don't worry you haven't uh, forgotten about anything it, they just included some extra screws in the package and this is how the uh, power supply looks when it's completed I will turn the switch on the back the fan will briefly start and it will then stop so right now no fan is running although the unit has three fans inside there is the fan on the enclosure the fan present on the front panel and the fan present on the power supply uh, when there is no load or light loads none of those fans is running if you'd like to see a size comparison here is the go for nps 1601 when compared to the uh, rd6006 you can probably fit at least two of these uh, go for power supplies in the same space occupied by the Raiden power supply but as I shown in the review video the RD6006 does come with a lot more features than the uh, go for NPS 1601 and also with a heavier price tag now to conclude the video I'll tell you what I think about this enclosure it's nicely made and it goes together without any problem or adjustments there was only this uh, small issue with the front panel not being completely a snug fit with the rest of the enclosure but I like the fact that the fans are not running when there is no load as far as negative things I must mention the fuse they supply seems a bit high uh, you don't need a 10 amp fuse for a 350 watts rated power supply there are no washers so things might come apart after some time although you have the option of leaving this power supply in standby and just turning it on or off from the front panel i would advise against doing that because it takes seven to eight watts of power in standby and that adds up to quite a lot of power being wasted over a long period of time so i will always be turning off mine from the uh, mains power switch on the back and let's not forget the cost getting the 60 volt switch mode power supply unit used inside plus this enclosure will set you back about 85 dollars which is more than the cost of the go for nps 1601 to that you have to add the the cost of the uh, front panel uh, controller which brings the total cost of this power supply to about 155 dollars that was all for today don't forget to check out the links i've placed in the description i would appreciate your feedbacks in the comments let me know if you have one of these power supplies if you plan to purchase one or if you think it's worth 155 dollars for what it offers thank you for watching and i'll see you next time